really actually we start by naming the good that we see. So it's, um, you know, in, in some systems, uh, that process of affirmation is kind of like, I'm going to find five things that I want to say about myself. You know, I am blank, I am blank, I am blank. You know, <laughs> it's a way of reassuring or whatever, opening up our, what we're trying to claim. But actually, the way we start is by asking people to name what they're seeing or experiencing outside themselves that they are enjoying and that f what, feel, what feels good for them. Um, partly as a way of, like one, one of the things we notice is that, like if I notice the good stuff that's out there, then not only is th it's a, just an interesting point of view to be looking for the good rather than looking for, th for the critique, but also I get to have that experience again. So if I go to a movie and I come out of it and I rehearse all the things I didn't like about the movie, I spent that time in the movie and then I've come out and I'm rehearsing all the things I didn't like. What a waste of time, you know, in some ways. Um, but to be able to be aware of the things that, um, that, I, that I appreciated, that I enjoyed, I also get to have that experience again. So we're, we're giving people a direct experience of, well, what does it feel, what does it feel like in your body? It feels good. Um, and then it t turns out that in the world, there's just so little oh. affirmation. You know, it, we, we tell stories kind of back and forth about situations where we've just said the simplest thing to people, kind of in recognition of what we were seeing in them, or you know, our appreciation for them, or whatever. And it was like, oh, thank you for saying that. Nobody ever says that to me. Um, and sure. what's up with that? You know, we're all working really hard, and no one is kind of pointing that out. So witnessing is a part. So affirmation is a social reality and interplay more than a personal work that I must achieve to uh, reassure myself. Um, so in witnessing, we're practicing noticing uh, uh, if I notice you and notice what, what's moving about your attention. I could actually say that I'm moved by your attention or by the tears that come to your eyes or I f and I, I, can, I feel connected to that. Um, that would be an affirmation. Right, so it would be an authentic experience of what's happening. And that happens, that witnessing thing happens all the time in interplay. So people are getting fed constantly. I hope, <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. having each of those pairs, <laughs> but I, more and more they're being given the experience of somebody recognizing them and recognizing something about them. But in addition to that, in order for a person, and I have to just bow in front of the amount of shame that people are enduring um, and living with. I, you know, again, I don't think there's any easy answer, including a set of affirmations, which I've seen people say over and over and over to a little, you know, effect, a little medicine, like taking vitamin C for a really bad flu. Um, I though think, I, I, I was watching my husband yesterday who had an interview for a job. And he was, he was telling me about it. He was sitting back in his, ch in his chair, and he was like, well, told me that he'd overshared during the interview. <laughs> and he didn't really want the job, so it's not so bad. But I said, well, maybe, you know, like we were, we were noticing his truth. And I said, well, what if you just stood up, you know, stood up on your feet and just claimed that these things are true for you? You don't want the, the job. No, 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 no. And so he did. He stood up because he's an interplayer. And, he, and w we have this thing that we all stole from Phil where you take your little, your little stick of inner authority in the top of your little mountain of <laughs> this island. It. You plant <laughs> it. So th th there's this need in the body to kind of go, true, like you do when you stake out something. When the body goes, true, it's like, oh, this is true. That for me is a better affirmation, a more, more of a physical mark in my body, I put my stake down here, than saying over and over to myself, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Because I know I'm not, you know, it's <laughs> like, but, or I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful, I'm not, not really, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of cute, something. <laughs> <laughs> There's all sorts of conditions about, you know, my, my life. So affirmation is social, and I think it's really, when there's something that we're coming up against that, that's harsh or hard or, you know, wobbly in us, it requires some other securing. And, and we do believe that. I, I mean, it's my experience that if I'm 
if I'm less judgmental uh, in yeah. to the the external, that I can also be less ju judgmental. We learn to, the to do that more for ourselves. Yeah, so I think it's kind of a, it's an indirect way of getting back to being able to claim what what we even appreciated about ourselves. You know, I did well. I I just did this thing. Well, I did that part pretty well. I did that part pretty well. When we speak in a made-up language, which sometimes can be, is under the umbrella of what we call babbling, um, the, you know, to be able to uh, be in a speech-like process, you can bring a lot of emotion, which you cannot actually fit into mm -hmm. words. You can bring the temperature of experience, the color of experience. So uh, there's so much. Like, I was in a group uh, the other morning and a friend of mine who I know a lot about her current story privately, she was in a group of inner players and we were going around just doing some very brief tellings about things we could talk about and she chose to use this made up speech and nobody in the room went <laughs> 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 but she Definitely, and you know, she's a very incredible storyteller. She could talk, tell you a story to hear and back, but she chose to use that as her communication because she didn't want to get into it. She didn't want to have to explain it. This is not her community of people regularly. So she had a way to bring some of that. Not to mention, what, what can you do intergenerationally? or? What can you do when your mom has Alzheimer's? Mm -hmm. And how do you relate to language in a conversational uh, or connective space that no longer has language as its greatest skill set? And do you mark a person by how well they put their words together? In, my, in the case of my mom, who had Alzheimer's and died from that in 2012, I learned to meet her in the way language was forming and to track with it. Um, I didn't have to always mirror it. You know, I didn't have to become it, but I could play with that. I wasn't judgmental about it. I wasn't worried about that. I didn't see her identity as her words. You know, her identity is in her body, spirit, something deeper. So having all these ways of accessing, understanding about words and opening that up, not only does it give me you know, all of that grace in relationship, but I get to get freer and freer and wilder and I think better with how I express myself using words. I always, I'm, I'm using that word better a lot. I just have to, <laughs> that's an interesting word. I'm getting better, see? <laughs> I feel, I feel good. Let me put that, put it that way more simply. I'm feeling good about my capacity. Um, about how I'm using words. Celebrating, and we also learn how to celebrate. That's different than affirmation, but like, you know, I made my bed, yay! <laughs> so like, what this woman I was coaching the other day, she has decided to quit her job and really put her spiritual direction self on the path of, of offering dance as part of her practice. And this was like, she's been doing this burn, burned out ministry thing for quite some time. I was like on the other side of the Zoom call, but I was like this, yay, <laughs> woo <-hoo!"> <laughs> And she knows me, so she wasn't, you know, thrown, some people would be. <laughs> but I feel like why, this is the momentous occasion. Why is there, why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we put our whole body to that and say this is absolutely fantastic. I actually feel so great about this. You know, that would be, a, to me, a powerful marker. Mm. And th so that's one of the things that we try to encourage, you know. And you do not want to go to a, and do a performance and have interplayers show up because they are very loud <laughs> and very <laughs> embarrassing. Because <laughs> we have learned that we have capacity to affirm in such a whole way. It's mm. fun. Yeah.